Joining us now is Pamela Falk, CBS News Foreign Affairs Analyst. Pam, good morning to you. Good morning, Benita. So we've been hearing about these chemical weapons for two years. Now we're hearing the general in charge saying we are ready to secure those weapons. How likely is it the U.S. will have to intervene? Uh, it's not likely that the U.S. will intervene, but what this was in a reappointment hearing for General Dempsey, and as Joint Chief of Staff Chairman, he was giving the options, and what he said was the Obama administration is deliberating some use of military force, but he wouldn't elaborate, and that's where that, uh, that exchange comes in with Senator McCain. What does that mean? And he pressed, he said that it, it's it's not up to me whether this would use kinetic strikes, meaning missiles or bombs. And that left Senator McCain wondering, does this mean the U.S. would get involved? The Obama administration is loath to get involved at this point. There are over 10,000 foreign fighters. So the real question is, what do they do to support the moderate opposition at a time when the Assad forces are actually gaining on the, on the rebels? I'm curious, though. We saw Secretary of State John Kerry touring these refugee camps where, as right. we had discussed, a majority of people in Syria right now, the civilians, are in these refugee camps. Yeah. It begs the question, where are we in terms of diplomatic talks to end this war without the U.S.? Well, that's right. He got an earful in Jordan with refugees, and the refugees are spilling out into all the neighboring countries, and the fighting is spilling out. There's Sunni-Shia conflicts that are erupting because of the fight. Iran's on one side with the Assad government with Hezbollah, and that's spilling over into uh, Lebanon, to Jordan, to Turkey, to Israel. And so all of those are problems. Now, what kind of negotiated solution? There is a thing called Geneva II, and that is a talks that would try to come up with an interim government with Assad government forces uh, and leaders, but not Assad, and the rebels. And Ahmad al-Jabbar is the person who is really trying to to, um, he's now the new president of the rebels. He's, he does not want to come to the talks until the moment that they really believe that Assad is leaving. And that is, that is uh, the biggest part of the problem. But what's interesting is the latest is he's touring around with the Syrian National Council. And they've gone, they were in Jordan, they're going to Paris and London, and th at least it's tentative. They're coming to New York, to the UN, uh -huh. to meet with this with the Security Council and the idea here is get to know this previously somewhat divided opposition so you have basically civilians in refugee camps you have other nations making alliances I mean what really is next for Syria in this ever-evolving saddening Process. It's really a disaster, and everyone throws up their hands at the confirmation hearing for Samantha Power to be the next, or to be the Obama administration appointee, to be the next U.S. ambassador to the U.N. She said it's a disgrace what is happening in Syria. It's almost 100,000 people dead, 5 million, as you say, in refugee camps. It's it's going into its third year, and it's it's spilling into in neighboring countries. Probably the best that all of these countries can do if there's no way to negotiate a solution is to contain this so it doesn't it doesn't continue to force other countries into civil war and that's probably the best best solution at this point I know containment never seems like a solution yes, exactly. Pamela Falk CBS News foreign affairs analyst thank you for joining us this morning absolutely Benita good to be here All right.